And you should be good, Mr. Eric. Mm, okay, can you see my screen? Mm, mm. Yes, we can. Okay, great. Sorry, I lost my I lost my video of everyone, but we'll be okay. Mm. Happy cold and snowy morning to you, Torrent Tigers. Mm. It's time for our TTN News Six, uh, new edition. We are going to get started right away. We'll give a quick glance at your news. We're going to move right into Chef's Corner to start the day with Mr. Terrence. Around town update with Miss Connie. <laughs> This Day in History with Mr. Sam, Sports News with me, Mr. Eric, Local Weather. You're going to be ready for that one with Mr. Charles and Pop Culture Insider with Miss Ash. So let's get started. <coughs> Mr. Terrence, are you live with us? I am. I'm on my phone right now. My computer is not wanting to cooperate right now. We can, uh, we can move ahead, <coughs> Mr. Terrence, nope. if that's better. or I've got the screen tilted on my phone. We'll rock it from here. Sounds great. Good morning, everybody. Just want to get your ABC mm -hmm. cards ready. We can go on to the next slide as you can see there. Mm -hmm. I'm freezing. So cold outside. All right. Let's look at our question mm -hmm. here. It says, are chili peppers spicy? So yes, mm -hmm. no, or mm -hmm. sometimes. So we can go A for yes, mm -hmm. B for no. Or C for sometimes. Uh, Somebody mind helping me with uh, looking around and seeing who's throwing up what answers? Mr. Terrence, Connie is class mm, yep. has A. I think mm, Eric had a C. Mm, Kaylee oh, had, a, had a yes for A. Uh, uh, Miss Lori had a C. Oh, Miss. Connie's room, switch it to a C. The core board right. says C. Connie says C. <laughs> All right. There really is no wrong answer here because spiciness is really subjective. Some people can handle heat. Some people can't. My wife, she doesn't even like putting pepper on food, whereas I can handle a little mild. And one of my friends will eat some of the hottest jalapenos that are out there. So let's see. Why are we talking about chili peppers today? Let's move on to the next slide, Mr. Eric. I'm going to talk about making a chili and sometimes people put chili peppers into their chili. Down here we've got a simple chili recipe so you can make a chili yourself at home really only using three ingredients. Although one of them does kind of cheat and add two inside of the can. So for our simple chili recipe we're looking at chili beans, diced tomatoes, which this can also has green chilies hidden in it, and lastly ground beef. If you want to click our chili recipe at the top, we can look at a more extensive uh, chili recipe because people use different things. Back to that one up there, up top. Perfect. Some people like to put different ingredients into their chili. Some keep it simple. Uh, this recipe involves a few more ingredients than the three that I had listed. Uh, and even for me, I swear every time I make a chili, it's different each time. Mm. Can I hear any sound, sir? That's all right. I can even talk through it while he's going through it. Okay. Still can't hear it? Nope. It's all right. I can talk about it. So here we see a nice bowl of... There we go. Mm. 
So while we're waiting for Mr. Terrence to come back, you've seen in here, they added their hamburger, their onions, they browned them down, add their spices, added their tomato juice and paste. Mr. Terrence, take over any time. I was just trying to help you out. I've got it. I appreciate that. Can you hear me now? So they are adding some ground beef. Looks like some tomatoes in there. They're going to put the top on and let it simmer. Let it cook for a little while, about 30 minutes. Making sure they stir it often. You don't want to burn that chili, any of the ingredients that you put into your pot. Some people use a Dutch oven. Some people even cook them in a they're talking about navy beans there. You can use different types of beans. Some people cook them in a slow cooker. That's how I usually do it and let it cook all day. Some people cook it on their stove. And at the end, you can add some cheese to it if you'd like, sour cream. Some people put some green onions on it. All right, we'll go back to our slide. And we'll go to our next one. All right, so do you like chili? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. I see Miss Ash says yes. Connie's room, we've got yeses. Mm -hmm. Is there any no's out there? It's a hard one to kind of not like, I think. Sam says yes. Lots of yeses. I don't see any no's out there. It is one of those things where you can make tons of different ingredients into it and make it kind of how you prefer. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go to our next slide. Why are we talking? And if you don't want to make chili at home, you can always go out and buy some at a restaurant. So we'll look at this week's restaurant review of the week, which is Smokehouse 52 located in downtown Chelsea, Michigan, 23.5 miles away from the Torrent Center in downtown Chelsea. What do I recommend there? They're loaded chili. It's amazing. They have beef breads get in there. They add a little cornbread. So it's a little different from uh, some of the typical chilies you'd see out there. They make an amazing mac and cheese, and I'm very picky about mac and cheese, and their desserts are to die for. Banana pudding, I suggest getting that, and then any of their barbecue is really good. Fun fact about Smokehouse 52, they use Jiffy products, which are made right in downtown Chelsea. And yes, their barbecue sauce, they have so many different types, they're so good. So that is it for me this week. Back to you, Mr. Eric. Thank you, Mr. Terrence. I can't think of anything better than chili on the days like we've had the past couple of days. You know, I totally forgot the reason I was bringing up chili was because next uh, Thursday is National Chili Day. That's why we're I was talking about chili. Great. Well, and to that, guys, uh, my husband, Mr. Tish, won a competition for his Mr. Waterloo barbecue chili in several competitions. Wow. Well, if you want to have him make a nice batch for us, Miss Connie, we will not complain about it. I second that, Mr. Eric. I think she needs to bring in a whole bunch for everybody. If you can get to Smokehouse 52, I've been there before. It is excellent. Okay, it's time for our Around Town with Miss Connie. Miss Connie, you ready? I'm ready. This week, Jackson County, or actually the whole month of February, Jackson County has been celebrating Black History Month, but they're mainly doing it virtually or online. And there are several activities that are planned. So one of them, the City of Jackson and Ella Sharp Park Museum have joined together to tell stories of Jackson's African-American community. So by going to their uh, Jackson City Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you can read the different stories of people that, um, right here in Jackson County. Two of those people I have highlighted here. One is Wanda Stevens. She um, won the Miss Wheelchair of Michigan. She was their queen for 1974. And then another gentleman by the name of George Edward he was born in Texas, but came to Jackson and loved it so much that he moved up here and he spent his entire life teaching horsemanship to young people in Jackson mm -hmm. County. Another place you can go if you will move on, Mr. Eric. Um, I we listed a couple of websites here. The first one is Experience Jackson. Here they celebrate um, February Black History Month every year uh, by 
um, highlighting accomplishments and triumphs of the Amer uh, African Americans throughout history. This year's theme is African Americans and the time of war, which couldn't be more fitting for Jackson. Nearly every corner of our county has a piece of history that can be connected back to the theme, especially when it comes to the Civil War. And um, so this is a great website if you want to learn more, not only about the roles that um, African Americans had in it, but also the role of Jackson County. At that same website, you can find out more about the Underground, underground Railroad and that the um, importance that Jackson played in helping um, slaves at that time to um, earn their freedom by going in through this hidden railroad. It's not really a railroad. It was a, a trails that they followed to get um, everyone to the north where they could be free. There's also, if you on um, the Civil War tours that you can do yourself. And then the last one that I included was from NLive. And they have a whole long list of different online activities that you can participate in mm -hmm. um, for, and in that um, is a self tour of historical sites here in Jackson. And they also list a um, special event that's being held on the 18th, which is tomorrow at mm -hmm. 7 p.m. on JTV. They are having a special um, Jeopardy game that you can participate in to find out how much you know about black history and the role it's played in Jackson County. So instead of asking questions this week, I have a challenge mm -hmm. instead. I would like you to take some time and learn about African American history and how they helped make Jackson County a great place to live. So if you send me a picture or drop me an email or text telling me something you learned, we'll highlight you on our next NTN6 News. Back to you, Eric. Thank you, Ms. Connie. Some great information about uh, the county and um, African-Americans who have served in this area. What's better than a little history on top of history? It's time for this day in history with Michael Jordan. No, just kidding, it's Mr. Sam. Mr. Sam, are you ready? Yes, we are, and of course we have another exciting day for on this day in history. So. And I've got little clues of some of the things we're going to be encountering just on this cover. Of course, this was just a picture of me back in high school. I looked a lot, lot more lean back then and you know, had a really good tan. So, yeah. But we'll go ahead and we'll move on to the next slide to get to our events. All right, looking at the very top left, we have a Native American or an Indian, as some of us um, refer to. His name is actually Geronimo. <laughs> Uh, to, Geronimo died on this day in 1909. We're talking 112 years ago. He was an Apache leader and, of course, had a, didn't like the America too much or Mexico as he would fight to keep his land. The Apache tribe was more out in the, I guess, the Great Plains states, uh, more in southern states like Texas as well. Mm -hmm. Of course, Geronimo, and of, of course, his name's pretty uh, famous because everyone drops his name a lot. Geronimo. But yeah, I thought that was a really cool one to bring. Now, sign to the to the center one, we're getting real historic here, actual historic stuff now. Uh, back in 1815, this day in history, the Treaty of, what was it? What was it? Ghent? Ghent, it was? The Treaty of Ghent was ratified by the U.S. Senate and signed by President James Madison. Of course, this was to end our part in the War of 1812. This, of course, comes a whole month after Europe had signed this, but remember, this was back in the day before cell phones. Um, and, of course, yeah, over in Europe is a whole ocean away, so when we would send late, uh, letters, it would take sometimes months to get over there, and sometimes they wouldn't even make it over there. They had to tr cross that treacherous ocean, being the Atlantic Ocean. So... That was a big thing because then that was the end of war. And anytime we were able to reach the end of a war, that is a good thing. Of 
course, that was the War of 1812. It started in 1812 and ended in 1850. <laughs> All right, now to slide on over to the right, top right, we have this gentleman running. This is the one and only Jim Brown. He was born on this day in history uh, in 1926, which will make him 95 years old today. He was a Hall of Fame running back for the Cleveland Browns, but then he decided to end his career a little bit early so he could pursue an acting career. It didn't work out so well for him, <laughs> but he tried. He was a much better football player. Now, looking right below Jim Brown, you can see why we have, why I have that picture of myself as Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was born on this day in 1963, okay, which makes him 54 years old. Am I got that right? Did I get my math right? Yeah. He's 54 years old, and he's, of course, arguably one of the greatest uh, basketball players of all time. I'm more of a Kobe Bryant fan myself. But that was a big part of that. <laughs> and, and, one, and we have one more. <laughs> One more event at, at the bottom left. We have back in 2020 on this day, so just one year ago, the Amazon boss, Jeff Bezos, I think I got that, pledged to donate 100, I mean, one, I mean, 10 billion dollars to help climate change. Oh, this man says 58 years old. Yeah, thank you about that. So that was a huge thing because we're talking 10 billion dollars. Okay, that is a 10 with, what, nine zeros after it? And this just happened last year. And, of course, Jeff, um, was it Bezos, Bezos, Baldy? Um, anyway, <laughs> he is arguably one of the richest people in the world, okay, or in, or in Amazon. Of course, I was well acquainted with Amazon over this last Christmas break. I think I ordered every single Christmas present off of Amazon. So, hats off to it. So, that is our history for today. We can move on. We I have one quiz, though, to see if everyone's paying attention. I see you over there, Yon and Molly. We gotta pick you up a little bit, girl. All right, I gotta move my little screen so I can see it. What famous basketball player was born on this date in 1963? Is it A, the one and only Jackie Moon from the Flint Tropics, or B, Michael Jordan for the Chicago Bulls, and what do you guys play? The Washington Wizards? Got that weird thing going on. <laughs> so I will ask again: What famous basketball player was born on this day? Was it A. Jenny Moon or B. Michael Jordan? We've got Corboards. We got B. We got Lori at a B. We got Mr. Eric at a B. We got Mr. Charles at a B. Kaylee, I believe that was a B. Yes, she's got a B. Molly, I see B's in your eyes. All right, and we got a B from Mr. Terrence. B from Julia. What do you got? There we go. We got a B from you two. And Ash, is Ashley, what's Ashley? What do we got? We got, a, we got another B. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? B is the correct answer. Michael Jordan was born on this day, not Jackie Moon. Both fabulous basketball players, but only one of them is real. <laughs> <laughs> so that is our history for today. Thank you, Mr. Eric. Back to you. Thank you, Mr. Sam. And just as the great Jim Brown tried to take on an acting career. The arguably greatest basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan, also tried his hand at a baseball career at one time. As Mr. Sam said, that didn't quite go as well for him as his basketball career. But speaking of sports, it's time for the sports news. Let's get into it. We got your MHSA local high school sports update. Guess what, everyone? Michigan high school sports are finally underway for the winter. What sports are we referring to when we talk about winter sports? Well, some of your most popular ones here are men's and women's basketball, men's hockey, women's volleyball, men's wrestling, and men's and women's, let's just say, snow sports. And we've got an example here of skiing, typically in your northern regions of the state, you would see more of the snow sports going on this time of the year. Got a few updates, tournament schedules. Uh, MHSA staff is completely focused on all regular season winter sports right now. Over the next few weeks, they are going to try to format and schedule winter tournaments and season finals. 
A little bit of update on spectator limits. Just so you know, right now, you still can't get into high school sports, even though you might be planning on it or wanting to, unless you have some kind of connection where you can receive some tickets uh, because they are limiting all facilities to certain amounts and ticketed. So just a short update here. I won't read through all this, but in spaces that have the capacity of about 10,000, they're limiting those to 500. Um, and all the way down to some of your smaller gyms and older gyms, which can hold somewhere in the 1,250, they're limiting those to 20% capacity. So in this case, that would be about 250 people. So you're going to see limitations between 500 mm -hmm. and 250 people allowed into these sporting events, depending on the facility's capacity. But like I said, if you can get connected with someone and you get a chance, maybe you can get a ticket and go out and see some high school sports in the near future. Continuing on, they're also talking about spring sports. On February 9th, they put out two ADs around the state that they needed to vote, uh, and that vote took place on February 12th. So they are in the works of trying to decide when spring sports will end. This is kind of a little conflict because they're trying to figure out when winter sports will end, and there's probably going to be an overlap. And that causes issues because we have many, many student athletes that play winter sports and spring sports. So how do we figure that out? It's, it's been a big problem, uh, but they're starting to hash that out. Typical start date for spring sports is around March 17th. So that's right around the corner, um, about a month away. So we've got a month to finish winter sports and get spring sports started. It's going to be a difficult task, but MHSA is working on that. Mask exemptions are still required, even for the athletes. Uh, basketball, competitive cheer, and ice hockey are required to wear their mask during competition. Um, same as uh, some of the requirements for tucked-in jerseys and things like that, masks are becoming the requirement uh, at these events. As always, if you do happen to be able to get to a sporting event, you will be required to wear your mask in those stadiums as well. Spring sports, when we talk about spring sports, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about baseball and softball. We're talking about track and field, soccer, and tennis. Those are your typical Michigan spring sports in the area. A little bit different than the winter sports. A um, little bit of Big Ten action for you. We are done with football. I won't talk about football anymore. Football season is over. The NFL completed, as you all know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady won the Super Bowl over the Kansas City Chiefs. There may be some sad faces out there, uh, but there may be some smiling ones too. So don't know where you stand on that, but Big Ten basketball is still going on. Michigan took 67 to 59 win over Wisconsin. Uh, two days ago, moving their record to 14-1. and one. They have an upcoming game. The Rutgers will be coming into Ann Arbor to face the number three in the nation, Michigan basketball team. Uh, that game you can see tomorrow, uh, 218 at 9 p.m. on FS1 if you're going to stay up late to watch that one. Otherwise, you'll need to catch the sports update the next day. MSU took a 65-75 to 75 loss over Purdue last night. That moves their record to 9-10, and 10, falling below 500 on the season. Hasn't been a great year for Michigan State basketball, but they do have a game coming up. They're heading to Indiana Saturday. You can see that game at noon on NBC. Okay, here's your sports quiz. Which of mm -hmm. these sports is a spring sport? Is it a... Downhill skiing, is it B, softball, or is it C, basketball? Let me know, Torrent Tigers. Hold up your A, B, C cards. Which one do you think? And if I could get some help from one of my other co-cast members, just tell me what is out there. That would be great. I've got it, Eric. Thank you, sir. All right, let's see what we're holding up. I'm holding up a B. Miss Connie's room has a B. Lori has a B. Charles has a B. Coreboard has a B. Julia's B. Kaylee's a B. Connie is a B. And that is it. Oh, Mr. Uh, oh, yeah. Sam's class has a B. So it looks like it's unanimous. B's across the board. 
Oh, yeah. You guys are too good. That was too easy for you. I don't know if it was the short sleeves or the green grass that gave it away, but it is definitely be softball. And you might not think it looking out there, but trust me, spring is right around the corner. It'll be here before we know it. And I won't say any more about that because it's time for our weather update with our favorite meteorologist, Mr. Charles. Mr. Charles, are you ready to give us the weather? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Mr. Eric. Thank you. And speaking of spring being right around the corner, I'm looking forward to that weather difference coming up. So uh, if we've seen anything the last couple of days, it's uh, some pretty intense weather. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. First, I'd like everybody to make sure you have your weather cards out. And we're going to make a quick prediction. What is the weather like outside today? Uh, we'll check out the actual weather in a moment, but I'd like to see your guys' predictions. Let's see, who's got their weather cards on them? Mm. Oh, Miss Kaylee says partly cloudy. I see some mm. suns peeking through in that picture there. Nice job, Kaylee. Let's see, I'm looking for Miss Julia, Miss Molly. Mm. Mm. I can't tell what Mr. Uh, Lord Licorice has there. It looks like a cloud from here. Mm -hmm. Oh, partly cloudy. Miss Eric's holding up a whole slew of things. Let's see, we got snow, we got partly cloudy and windy. Mm -hmm. Mr. Charles, if I had my freezing card, I would hold that one up mm -hmm. for you. That would be a good one. You'll have to talk to Miss Ashley. She didn't send out freezing cards when we did the. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she didn't anticipate this. Yeah, no, I wasn't agreeing to this. It was my silent mm -hmm. protest of this cold. All right, Mr. Eric, if you don't mind hitting the question mark on that screen there, that'll tell us the weather in Jackson today. It is currently 17 degrees today. Uh, and you can see the picture on the right there uh, is of a sun. So it is sunny outside. Um, the high is only going to be 21 degrees, though, and the low will be down to 10. Mm -hmm. Now, when I woke up this morning, I have to tell you guys, my furnace turned off in the middle of the night and I was pretty darn cold. And I checked my phone and it said negative 13 degrees outside. <laughs> I've since got it fixed, so no worries there. <clears throat> Mr. Terrence had to go help jump start a friend's car. Yeah, it was negative 17. Um, quite the chilly morning. But as we look forward, um, Miss Amy keeps saying that we were gonna have another snowstorm. Um, in the next couple of days. When I looked it up, it said it was only going to accumulate maybe another inch or so. Um, now, I as a weatherman have every right to be wrong in the next couple of days. So we will, we will wait and find out. Uh, Mr. Eric, if you don't mind going back and clicking on the snowflake in the right corner. Um, we're gonna talk about, since we had so much snow in the last couple of days, let's uh, learn a little bit about about snowflakes and how they're formed. Are you getting the audio? We're not. Um, I wasn't well versed enough like Mr. Terrence was with his chili video to tell you what they're saying in here. Um, I will say that every snowflake, the way it's formed, um, it starts with dust particles up in the sky. And as they're floating around in the sky, you'll see that's a dust particle right there. It's gonna run and collide with uh, some of the precipitation, the, the moisture in the air. And as it does with the cold temperatures, it starts to form. When snowflakes form, uh, the way the water freezes, the hydrogen and the oxygen, it forms into a hexagonal shape like this. So every single snowflake is going to have six sides. And then as it falls, now this is also the reason why snowflakes, um, why every snowflake is different, because as it drifts through the air, uh, the each snowflake travels a different path in the atmosphere, and it starts to change and form, and some of the branches start to melt off while others grow and become larger, which is exactly why every snowflake is different. Um, so we can probably go back, Mr. Eric, then that was kind of, that's pretty much the gist of it. 
Oh, except there's some there's some really nice pictures of uh, snowflakes at the end here. If you guys want to see them, lots of lots of different types of snowflakes. Um, back in the 1930s, they thought there was only 21 types of snowflakes, and now oh my, all these faces are in the way. In 2013, they realized there's at least 121 different types of snowflakes now. So here's a slow motion picture of what a snowflake's like uh, when it forms. Um, as the cold airs hit the center of it, it, it um, disperses throughout. So all snowflakes are going to be symmetrical. Um, and there's just some really cool pictures of the way different snowflakes can turn out. When I was researching that, I did find the very first photographer to, to photograph an individual snowflake was back in like the 1930s. And what he would do is he would stand outside in the freezing cold with his, with his uh, nice camera and with a microscope. And he would wait till there was freezing temperatures, catch the snowflake, put it under the microscope, and then take a picture of it that way. And he was the very first person to photograph uh, snowflakes. So just a fun fact. If you want to go to the next page there, Mr. Eric, please. It says, while every snowflake is unique, what is one thing they all have in common? Is it A, that snow is white? B, that all the snowflakes travel by strong winds blowing from the North Pole? Or is it C, that all snowflakes have six points to them? Molly. What do we think? A, snow is white. B, they travel by North Pole winds, or C, they all have six points. I see Miss Molly holding up a C. And I gotta flip through my people here. Lots of C's from Mr. Terrence and Mr. Eric and Miss Connie. Uh, Coreboard mm -hmm. says C, Lori's got a C. Kaylee, I'm sorry, I, I feel like I saw you holding something up, but I missed it. There you go, C for you. Yep, and C from Julia. Nice job. You guys are correct. I was wondering if this was going to trick you. Uh, it is that C. They all have six points. Well, if you think about snow being white, snow is actually clear, um, kind of like a glass. And the reason it looks white to us is that it reflects all the light that's hitting it. Um, so that's like if you're inside for a long time and you walk outside and it's really snowy, uh, why it kind of hurts your eyes, it's very bright. It's because all that light is reflecting off the snow back at you. Um, and we're gonna talk a little, actually there's a polar bear in this picture as well. And I thought this was interesting. The same thing goes for polar bear's fur. Polar bear's fur, if you look at an individual, individual fur is actually clear like a snowflake. But I, I, always, I always assumed they were white. Um, but no, it's the same thing that happens with the snow. <clears throat> Anyways, if you go on, Mr. Eric, we have just a couple more fun facts about snow. Um, in this case, the colors of snow. While it's typical snow is transparent, it looks white, like we said, because of the light reflecting off of it. However, there are areas around the world where snow takes on a different look. Um, there's in the bottom left picture, picture of blue snow. And some of, in some areas of Russia, this is due to so many extra layers of snow on top of each other. It filters out more red light, giving it a bluish hue. Uh, up in the mountainous areas of Antarctica, they actually have pink snow. Uh, and that's because they have a specific type of algae that's red in color. Uh, so then when the snow forms, it turns into this pinkish color. Uh, there's some, uh, if in some areas around the world where there's a lot of microscopic algae uh, in the water, it combines with the snow particles and creates a green snow like that third picture. And then of course, there's the ever infamous yellow snow that we all need to be very cautious and stay away from. <clears throat> and that's gonna wrap it up for weather, Mr. Eric. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Charles. And as they say, do not eat the yellow snow. Miss Ashley, it's time for pop culture. You ready to give us a roll? I am. And today, guys, we are going to talk about a new Disney short film that came out on January 10th. It's Loop. And Mr. Eric, if you'll go to the next page. We'll see if my video works. <laughs> Well, 
it doesn't I mean, seem to want to play anything this ashley you want me to try it from my computer you might have to do i need to unshare I'm not sure if you guys are here and I'm still not getting any sound there, Miss Ashley. I got it to play here, but I, I'm not sure why none of the sounds coming through. Okay. Is that playing? Do you want me to unshare Miss Ashley? Yes, can you please unshare? Because it oh. should be my screen that's shared right now. It says that we're viewing Ashley's screen. Oh, okay. Could you hear it, Charles? Yeah, still no sound, uh, but I, it is. it looks like it's playing, but we can't hear anything. Okay, well then we'll just skip the video. Basically, Loop is a story about a young girl named Renee who has autism and she makes a new friend, <laughs> whose name is Gavin, I believe. And Renee does not talk, but Gavin does. And it tells the story of how they <laughs> learn to navigate both a canoe together and their new friendship. And it's a very cool story about someone with autism. And Disney Pixar decided that this was an important film because they wanted all people to be represented um, in their films and in their movies. So I'm curious, do you want to watch the film? A- yeah or b no what do you guys think i saw i think it was mr sam in the chat say that his kids really liked it yeah okay. i see lots of yeses has anybody already seen this other than mr sam a for yes b for no oh so miss Mr. Terrence and Mr. Sam, I think are the only ones who have seen it. So it's on Disney Plus and I really recommend seeing it. It's a very short film. It's only 11 minutes long, but it's very good. It's very cute. Um, and you get to see how Renee interacts with the world and how her friend or her new friend learns to understand Renee. So my last question is, how do you think seeing this film would make other people with autism feel? Like, do you think they would feel happy for A? Do you think they would feel embarrassed for B? Or do you think they would feel maybe C for surprised? What do you guys think? So happy, embarrassed, or surprised? I see some A's and some C's and I agree. I think you might be happy because you get to see somebody who's just like you in a movie and that's really special. And I think you might be surprised because we don't often see that in film and that's something that really needs to change. And I think this is a really positive step that Disney and Pixar are doing. So I hope you guys check it out. If you do, let me know how you liked it. And our last thing for me is birthdays. And we only have one birthday left this month and that is on the 25th and that's our friend Caleb. And that's actually it for me, Mr. Eric. All right, well, thank you, Miss Ashley. That concludes our TTN News 6 edition for today.
I'd like to thank all of our contributors and all of our local sponsors for allowing this broadcast to air. And if you happen to get out today, which I don't recommend, I'd say stay in and stay warm. But if you do, Torrent Tigers, don't forget to go out there and roar. Mm -hmm. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.